So, uh, this video is going to be about some knives I got from a relatively young knife maker up in Pennsylvania, uh, Kyle Beetleyun. Really cool young guy, uh, similar age to me, mid 20s. And I just started making knives. And I found him through Cliff Stamps' page. He had some posted up some knives in him. And I was really interested because I liked a particular knife that was kind of a modified Warren Cliff that he showed. And I started to talk to him. Got some of his knives, and I think Kyle's a really cool guy, and I think his knives deserve a little bit of recognition. Uh, I have three models right here. Uh, this big orange one, I just call the Cleaver. Uh, Kyle, I've talked to him uh, quite a bit over the last month. He doesn't really have like specific names for a lot of his models, because I talked to him about it. He said he's just not really good at naming. So, it's kind of like a toss-up for a lot of the models as to what they're named. So, I just call this one the Cleaver. This little one in the middle, the utility knife, and I call this the brush sword. Uh, those aren't official names. If you go up to Kyle and say, hey, I saw this dude doing a video on the brush sword. Can you make one? He might not know what that is. That's just what I call them for my purposes. And uh, just to get specs out of the way, this is about a 7-inch blade, 5160, tapered tang, about, about a quarter inch thick. It comes down to about 30 thou behind the edge. And it's 59 to 60 Rockwell heat treated by Peters. This is uh, CPM M4, 63 Rockwell by Peters. And I'm not positive on the blade thickness. I think it's 8th uh, inch-ish. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm not very good at measurements. I need to get a caliper. I just keep putting it off. Um, about 10 thou behind the edge. Wonderful, wonderful cutter on this knife. About 4 inch blade. Here, this big son bitch is uh, still 5160. Uh, black Cerakote, quarter-inch thick, no taper tank, so this is still the same weight, although it does have a taper up towards the tip. And I'm not really positive about the thickness behind the edge. I would guess at least 30 thou, somewhere around there. And uh, black micarta handle scales. Also forgot to say JG10 handle on that, and obviously orange G10, all Kydex sheaths. Uh, this is the one that I've had the most use with. I've done a bunch of cardboard and wood cutting runs with it. I've also used this quite a bit as a paring knife in the kitchen. And uh, this knife, I, simply I love this knife. It fits really comfortable in the hand. The jimping Kyle does, it's very, very nice. He has these big spots in the middle and each flat is filed so it gives you quite a nice grip it's good for indexing to let you know where your thumb is or if you put a little bit of pressure it still holds it in without being abrasive and ripping your thumb up i got a nice sort of uh, i guess you would call it a modified one cliff and do the way the it's a flat grind most of it's a full flat grind but up here towards the handle it's kind of a it stops but for all intents and purposes i just call this a full flat it has a very slight taper to the blade, not a lot, and the blade has a tiny bit of sweep. You can't really see it all that well like this, but uh, it's definitely got it if you put it on a cutting board. And I put some uh, vi a video on IG of this knife. Uh, my IG is Kunash Jedi. Uh, it was just me free cutting a grape on a cutting board. It did it no problem. This is just a very enjoyable knife to use for general utility. Uh, because let's face it, uh, at least for here in urban Baton Rouge, this, mostly I got this to support Kyle and because I think they're cool. I really don't have a serious functional use for those types of knives on a daily basis. But I like knives, so I bought them, what the hell. But this is a really beautiful knife. This is possibly one of the best exhibitions of M4 I've used. It's very, very nice. One of the weird, weird things about M4 in my experience is even though it's a high carbide steel, it has pretty damn good fine edge retention, especially compared to its other high carbide compatriots like 90, S90V, S110V, 10V, etc. Uh, very nice steel, very nice execution. Handle, and this is a similar thing on all of these, all three of these knives. Handle is very well rounded, no sharp edges. Everything is flush, nothing to stick you. Very, very comfortable in terms of ergonomics, but again, uh, that is, as I've said in other videos, ergonomics are very uh, subjective. So what is comfortable for me might not necessarily be comfortable for you. 
but I suspect that these handles that Kyle does would be comfortable for most everybody. And this is affixed with two brass pins, and I would assume epoxy. Uh, this one, out of the two new ones, because I got this knife and this big one last week, this one I've had for about a month. I played with this this weekend, this fr last Friday, at my brother's crawfish boil down in Crown Point. And I did a little bit of cutting, did a little bit of playing with it. I played a little bit with some 2x4s here in the backyard. Um, but this is the one I've used the most because I also use it in the kitchen. Um, quite a nice knife. You wouldn't think it would be that good in as a kitchen knife, but as it, obviously it's very cleaver. You can see full thickness spine with the taper. It's got a weight heaviness to it. I parted out a chicken with this yesterday, and it did quite nicely. Obviously, meat is not something that's a str a super strenuous to cut. You don't really need crazy geometries to cut meat, but even on the bone work, I took the knuckle off of a chicken leg, did find no deformation. I hacked straight through the ribs to save that bottom half for stock. I'm making gumbo this Friday, and um, I hacked the breasts in half so I'd have two of those and it did quite well I've also done some lighter cutting I've done some onions with it obviously this is not going to be ideal for that thing that sort of cutting but it it did it um, being that this is uncoated 5160 this absolutely has started to form a patina I'm not positive if I can get it in the light but it's starting to get some discoloration. Not as bad as I was expecting, especially Kyle kind of, you know, sort of hyped up the rust of it. I think that's probably his perception just because he's up there right now in winter with all that damn salt and snow, which is apparently how they get rid of snow up there. I wouldn't know. Born and raised in Louisiana. Um, but it's not terrible. Obviously, with an uncoated 5160 of plain carbon steel, it will rust if you don't take care of it. That's imperative. But if you just take a little bit of sense... Don't leave it sitting in orange juice overnight. It's really not that atrocious. But I'm finding I really enjoy this knife. I also just enjoy it from just an enjoyment perspective, I guess. I don't really know how to say it. I just like having and using the knife. I'm one of those people that messes with knives. Like I have couch knives and everything when I'm watching movies. Much to the chargon of my roommates. So this has just been a really fun knife to mess around with, play with, do you know, stuff, cut things, um, really enjoy it. And here, the big one, is what I just call the brush sword. It's sort of a go-between, between like a pure machete and a pure heavy chopper, similar to, um, I don't know if you guys have seen Dan Keffler's work, fantastic knife maker, really makes a solid heavy chopping knife. This is kind of the go-between, and in my opinion... I mean, I'm not claiming to be the ultimate bushcrafter, but for the type of vegetation we have here in southern Louisiana, I actually prefer this type of thing to a machete or a heavy chopper. Because the type of vegetation, we ha being that it's that subtropical, we have that in-between stage where it's not just light vegetation. And it's not super heavy, thick, boreal forest like you'd get up north. Or in the Pacific Northwest, you'll get heavy, uh, really big, heavy woods. We get tend to be, you know, smaller trees, heavier vegetation, like a lot of palm and things like that. But also a lot of saplings, pine saplings, some oak saplings and things like that. And those get deadfall a lot, and that's the type of stuff I find cutting. Especially if I go to my uncle's house in Chack Bay, Louisiana. We have a lot of property down there, which is a lot of swamp, and then it'll transition into some pine forest and things like that. So this type of go-between between machete and heavy chopper actually, in my experience, works quite well down here. This is based on speed. You're not, this is a lot of wrist and elbow snaps. You know, when you're cutting, you bring it up towards your shoulder, and it's just basically you're using your joints to snap and accelerate in different stages. At least that's how I use it. And I always do that, you know, snap right at the end of the cut to just get that extra acceleration into the material. And this works quite well. Kyle did build this as a speed chopper. You know, like I was saying with those Keflers and some of the bigger knives, or maybe the Kodiak Survival Sword from Omnivore Blade Works, another really nice heavy chopping knife. It's not necessarily as much speed. While you can use speed with those knives, they're really based around a lot more deliberate 
a lot of hip twists and shoulder drives with those knives to really get it in the wood this is much more about speed and especially if you see the tip up near that tip you get a lot of speed that cuts really well and then you come here in the middle is while you'll still get speed that's where you'll get your most power and I was playing with it in my brothers and I'll it was knocking off probably two inch one and a half to two inch oak branches with no issues and this tip part up here will it's while it's I'm not certainly claiming it's ideal in any way it will take light grasses and vines and stuff without really any serious issue it obviously be more fatiguing than a uh, light machete which is ideal for that type of cutting but it can do it but uh, again I haven't had a drastic amount of use with this next time older brother has a crawfish boil I'm probably gonna bring this down there and go playing around in the back of the woods with it do some more work try to get used to it but um, I'm really enjoying it again like I was saying with the others very comfortable handle all of this is well rounded very very comfortable a nice scallop up here that comes out well not scallop uh flared pommel that comes out so you can get a little bit extra length i typically just use it up here it's nice but it is nice security um, it doesn't have a lanyard tube that's not a big deal to me i'm not really a lanyard guy generally but i suppose if you wanted something like this kyle would have no problem putting a lanyard tube in it and one of the other things I wanted to talk about lastly is uh, sharpening with these knives. Uh, this is CPM M4. It's M4. If you've messed with um, anything like M390 or anything like that, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, I absolutely suggest diamonds to do the steel. Although I have sharpened M4 on my 1000 grit Kingstone with just that stone. Did quite It did quite nice. It put actually a pretty sweet finish on it. It was a really nice combination between polish and aggression, but it would take a while because this is a high carbide steel. Um, I typically use diamonds for pretty much all rough shaping just because it's easier to me. And so uh, this sharpened up very clean, very keenly, very easily. Minimal burr issues with that. Very, very easy to minimize the burr and what burr there was on it. Very easy to knock that off. Sharpens up beautifully. And with these two, I was actually really surprised. I sharpened this one up, not because I needed to, but because I just wanted to test out 5160. Haven't played with it before. I've played with plenty of the other uh, plain carbon steels, uh, 1095, 1075, um, 1084, stuff like that. And this is just in that same vein. Although I will say this could be purely perception. It could be, you know, just me noticing something that wasn't there. But this edge formed extreme it almost formed by accident and what i would argue that i'm a tr that i feel that way is because one i'm used to sharpening a lot of high carbide steels like this i also have s110 v s90 v 10 v a bunch of other m4 d2 um a lot of the high carbide steels and because i sharpen them so often because they're prevalent with a lot of friends knives and because i have a lot of them because i just enjoy different steels I'm so used to sharpening steels like this that this thing formed an edge almost by accident. And I was also surprised because I had very, very minimal burr issues with this, which I'm kind of used to to other production knives with these plain carbon steels. But I think the reason I had such an easy time sharpening this one, I also did this one, was in part because I use diamonds to shape. And also, this is a quite a bit higher hardness than most of the plain carbon steels you'll find in the production world being that they are typically hardened for toughness over edge properties which I could probably make a video about that by itself but just in the short of it I think the production world has just gone off the uh, off the wagon with this weird idea that you have to make these huge concessions to edge properties for toughness in these plain carbon steels and Kyle didn't do that with these being a 59 to 60 uh, it's a lot harder. I don't find a whole lot of 5160 in the production world. Ontario is the one that usually does most of it. And they heat treat it rather soft at about, I've seen uh, their literature say anywhere from 53 to like 56. 
which in my opinion is simply absurd for this type of steel. This is what they make leaf springs out of, even at 60 Rockwell, hell, even at 61 Rockwell. At this thickness, uh, there's no practical thing you're going to do with this knife that's going to break it. So, I think that's the reasons I had such nice sharpening uh, experience with this steel. Uh, anyway, guys, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Kyle Budian, KWB Blades on Instagram. That has his email and a phone number. He's a really nice guy. He's really cool to talk to if you guys have any questions. I implore you guys to get in contact with him. Check out his stuff on IG. He's got plenty of available material and he does really solid work and he's willing to do custom work for stuff you would like so get at him and uh if you guys have any questions about these knives in particular please put them down below and i'll get back y'all have a good day